Chris Fernari here with Brewbound.com, and we're hanging out at the Oma Gang Brewery. We're here with Simon, president and CEO of Duval and Oma Gang. That's right. Thank you for coming, Simon, well, and well, joining well, me well, on well, film today. What do you think makes Oma Gang the number one or two most profitable brand in a wholesaler's portfolio? Is it the Belgian-inspired influence? Is it the quality? Is it just strictly a you know 750 package that's that's driving it? Um, yeah, for sure, some of it's pricing, and that all ties back into our ability to. Uh, price at the top end of the pyramid is driven purely by quality. Um, that stems from our Belgian heritage. Belgian beers are the, you know, that, that's what everyone aspires to be and there's that rich heritage behind it. Um, part of it is to do with the fact we're part of Duval. Um, Duval, the only beer ever to rate perfect 100. It's, it's the classic golden ale from Belgium. Uh, it's very, very difficult to make it, and, and it's got this great reputation that Omegang as well benefits from. Um, part of it is um, the balance of our margin pool between retail, wholesale, what we take uh, from a distribution point of view and what, what we take from a brewing point of view, and we try very hard to balance that out so that everyone is making money along the chain. And again, unlike some other breweries, what we don't do is try and squeeze profit at our end and minimize the amount of money that a wholesaler is making. If a wholesaler is making a lot of money on our brands, fantastic, because they're going to want to grow them. Yep. Motivation. You got it. Oma Gang is a business almost entirely, but not entirely, but largely based on selling, you know, the high quality 750 milliliter format bottles. Um, you do do some four packs. But it's like you said, it's not a, a very high volume business for you guys. Um, do you foresee in the future, you know, any challenges uh, that that business model will present as the craft business continues to grow and as you sort of, uh, not for lack of a better word, get forced, but you know, you're sort of forced to become a volume brewery? Great question. I mean, in, in truth, um about half of the growth of the company in the last three years has come from draft, uh, but that's really developing high-end restaurants, uh, white tablecloth and, uh, and really great quality distribution. So about half the growth has come from, uh, from draft. Um, one of the challenges that we all face, I mean, not just us as Omegang, but is this complexity that's, that's come into the craft market, particularly in the last, I mean, in the last two years particularly. And, uh, what that means is that if you've got a couple of SKUs, it's real difficult for you to stand out on shelf. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the major challenges we face. We've looked at that with Oma Gang by we've, we've got a rebranding of all the packaging to give it a much more unified look so that now if you walk into retail, then you can see Oma Gang more clearly. Sure. Uh, I think that's one of the big challenges. Um, I think retail is... Uh, particularly chain retail is starting to look at the craft category and make some fairly tough decisions about what they're going to stock and what they're not going to stock. I think that's going to force some you know, weeding out of, of brands that are not going to survive. We're real fortunate with our reputation. We don't feel a lot of heat from that. Um, but I think that's the, that's the second major issue uh, for any craft brewery right now. And frankly, you know, as I said, for us, the the most important thing is, is not to worry about volume. We, we often ask ourselves how big and can you be and still be special. So a lot of people discuss about you know, how big is the craft category going to be and you know what's a craft brewery if it's three million barrels and so on. But I, don't, I don't care about that. I mean, for me, it's much more important to say how big can we be without losing that exclusive, slightly rare, um, just the cachet of the brand and, right. and we polish that every single day. So speaking of the brewery, uh, walk us through some of your distribution footprint right now. Um, you know, how far does Oma Gang reach and I guess you know well, what are the plans to reach even further? <laughs> well um, unlike a lot of craft breweries, Oma Gang uh, and especially breweries, Oma Gang and Duval, uh, we have a national footprint um, already. Um, that was started about, uh, that was pretty much put in place about five years ago. We sell, so we sell in all 50 states. Um, the, a lot of our business is concentrated, as you might imagine, with Oma Gang in, on the eastern seaboard, but uh, 
One of the fastest growing markets for us is California. Um, I reckon within within 18 months, maybe two years, California will take over New York as being our biggest single market. Wow. Um, in Any particular reason why? Um, I think a lot of it, it, it uh, the, the Duval brands, so Duval, Schuf, Maritus, do particularly well. The imports do particularly well in California, so that strengthens the overall business. And Omegang, um, well, as you know, I mean, it's kind of top of the pyramid quality. There's maybe only three or four breweries in the country that can do what we can do here. And um, in that sense, we've picked up a real great following amongst California beer aficionados. So California's been fantastic and uh, equally, we focus on 12 markets. So they're the ones that make or break us. Um, that would be you know, going from west to east, that would be San Francisco, LA, uh, San Diego, Chicago, uh, Dallas and Houston. I'm gonna not get 12 now, but uh, Boston, down through New England to New York, and then um, Washington DC and Miami. Um, so those are the places where we would deploy our, the focus of our resources and our people. Right. And is there, I mean, what's the strategy behind those markets? Are those just very craft-centric markets that you're zeroing in on, you know, really looking for that, I guess, high-end, white tablecloth setting where you can present the beer, pair it with food, you know, do whatever? Exactly what you said. I mean, <clears throat> it's very tempting, I think, to just go for um, craft, big, big volume craft beer uh, markets and, and, frankly, distribution within those markets. So. Um, we don't do that. What we look at is very high-end markets where we can target high-end restaurants, fine dining, high-end shishi bars where the brand plays well. Um, and again, part of, our, part of our dilemma always is to make sure that we're always going for quality, not quantity. And it's a real easy thing to talk it, but it's, a, it's much more difficult to walk it. Now, in terms of, uh, I guess, expansion and growth beyond that, um, you guys are going to sort of stick at that 150,000 barrel capacity for a while, or? I think there's probably, you know, I, 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 truthful answer is I don't know. Um, there's probably some kind of distribution driven limit, at which point, as I say, you, you become not very special anymore, and you kind of lose that top of the pyramid um, feel about the brand. I'm guessing it's about 150,000 barrels, but I have no, no idea. So as we grow, one of the things we want to do is, is keep measuring one simple metric each year, which is, is this brand still special? And that's pretty much the only one that really, really matters to us. If, you, if we dial off that, then we've got an issue. So uh, one thing that folks can look forward to out of Oma Gang this year? Well, it's, that's a great question. There's a lot of interesting work being done with collaborations, and I mean, you can see some really great ones are, are in the US. And obviously, for us, the pinnacle of collaboration that you would ever want is to have Omegang produce beer with Duval. So, at the back end of the year, finally, after three years of hard work, we've got the uh, Duval Rustica, which is a collaboration beer between Duval and Omegang. Wow. Um, the way to think about it is, if you imagine Duval, perfect beer, how, what happened if you made that at a rustic farmhouse in upstate New York, what would it taste like? And it would obviously, you'd have to be able to tell that Duval was in it, but you'd also want it to have some of that rustic farmhouse Omegang feel as well. And uh, uh, so, I mean, I'm thrilled with it. it it's, it's a real interesting one. And I think, again, if we could do one thing in Omegang that would get beer aficionados excited, it would be to say, okay, so we put Duval and Omegang together and this is what happened. It's fantastic. Awesome. Well, looking forward to trying that one. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Great to have you back.